Hello, my name is Flavia Abadia. I have DJed hundreds of weddings independently as well as through the top entertainment companies. So I have a lot of experience and things to share. This is the wedding series. What? After cocktail hour, you have reception. And for that, I definitely recommend having a DJ because you have formalities. So let's get into reception. For the reception, there are so many formalities and depending on your culture, you might have different elements coming into play. If you're Middle Eastern, you might have a grand entrance with Arab drums. If you're not having a grand entrance, then you can definitely incorporate these drums at the beginning of the dancing portion of the evening. It adds a layer of fun, energy, and incorporates your culture for all your friends, family, and yourself to enjoy. If you're from Eastern Europe, there might be a bread dance or different things. So the reception can really vary. I really recommend having a DJ who is like, on standby, always there, making sure that there is no dead air, everything is seamless, smooth. They work with the wedding coordinator or the wedding planner to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. For grand entrances, in general, you would have an MC announce either the wedding party coming in first to whatever song. It could be couple by couple of, let's say, a bridesmaid and a groomsman walking in together. It could be all the bridesmaids walking in or all the groomsmen walking in. And sometimes this can be cool because they can have a dance, a choreographed dance coming in, which is kind of fun. Yeah, it just brings more life and another moment to the party, which is cool, as they're walking in. And then, there's a song for the couple's grand entrance. So all of these formalities you don't have to do. I'm just talking about them. If you choose to do it, you can go ahead and have these tips and tricks for that. But if not, you don't have to do them. It's your wedding. So for the grand entrance, you have the MC announcing for the first time, please welcome Mr. and Mrs. or whatever the case is. Insert last name here or however you want to be introduced. And then the people walk into the chorus of the song in general. You don't play from the beginning, you play from the chorus, which is like a hype, you know, fun part of the song. They walk in, hey, you know, there might be a choreographed dance or it might just be like, hello, we're here, <laughs> you know, thanks for coming, la la la. And then after the grand entrance is a great time to have a first dance because you're already in the center of the room and then you can get the first dance done and then relax, eat. If you want, you can also put in a speech, like your couple's speech after the first dance or after the grand entrance. I highly recommend doing the couple's speech at the beginning if you can, because then you can relax. You don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, the speech is coming up or I can't drink too much because the speech is coming. No, you can get the speech done. You can thank everyone for coming. It's great. And then you can enjoy the rest of your evening. So Having your speech here after the grand entrance or at the beginning of the evening is a great time to do it if you are going to do a speech or a toast. Yeah. Other formalities are the parent dances. So sometimes parent dances can be a little sensitive if someone has passed away. If you do want to do parent dances and someone has passed, it's sometimes nice to do them together. So instead of having an isolated mother-son dance and father-daughter dance, for example, you can have both at the same time. Then you can have someone else come in and dance, for example, or you can choose to omit it altogether and not do any parent dances or just do the one parent dance and that's it. So when it comes to dances, especially parent family dances and first dances, when you're choosing your song, pay attention to how long it is. Sometimes people don't realize they pick a five minute song and they, they're like, oh my God, I don't like attention. And I pick this five minute song. I mean, it doesn't happen at weddings that I DJ because I let the couples know ahead of time once they send me their song. If you're like in the middle of the dance floor dance and you're like, oh my God, when is this song gonna end? I want this to end. Make sure you are very conscious of how long the song is. And the first dance can be, like I said, at the beginning if you'd like, or it's a great way to bring people on the dance floor after dinner. So for example, after dinner, after all the speeches, we're gonna run through the speeches as well. After all the speeches, the MC announces, a please welcome to the floor, blah, blah, blah. And then it's the first dance. Then halfway through the song, a great way to get people on the dance floor is to invite them halfway. So halfway through the song, the DJ or MC could announce, 
please join our newlyweds on the floor. And then all the couples go on the floor, they dance together, the floor is full, and then the DJ can kick off the dance floor with a high energy song right after. So that is one way to kick off the dance floor and where to put your first dance song if you'd like to do a first dance. These are all suggestions. Of course, you can have the song finish, that be a thing, and then do your speech or then go straight into dancing. It's whatever you'd like because it's your wedding. Now let's touch on speeches. So in general, you want the speeches of all your guests to be fairly short. You can give them guidelines, parameters. In general, I wouldn't suggest putting all your speeches at once. I would kind of spread them out. Let's say first course, you have two to three speeches. Main course, you have two to three speeches. And dessert, you have one speech. So that way, people aren't tired. They can still talk to each other, catch up with people at the table. It just gives a little bit of breathing room and for people to go to the bathroom, do whatever they have to do. So as a DJ, I love creating moments in weddings. A really cool way to do that is as someone is walking up to the podium to say their speech, this would be coordinated ahead of time. You can request a song that reminds you of that person, or let's say you have an inside joke or memory with that person, the DJ would then play the song as they're walking up. Let's say, for example, I'm the bride and my maid of honor is going to do the speech and her and I, we were like in a Spice Girl group in elementary school together. Maybe it's a Spice Girl song as she walks up to say her speech and we're like, oh, you know, it's a cute little way to create a moment, which is nice. As a DJ, if someone doesn't have a request ahead of time, a couple doesn't have a specific song that they want the person to walk up to, I have so many suggestions and songs in my folders ready to go. So for example, let's say it's a maid of honor, I might play, that's my girl, that's my girl from Fifth Harmony, for example. Anyways, <laughs> if it's only a mother going up to do a speech and I know she's British, I might play like Mama I Love You by Spice Girls. If it's a friend, I might play You Got a Friend in Me from the Toy Story movie. There's a lot of different songs that I can play. So if a couple doesn't have a suggestion, I put something there. As a DJ, I hate dead air. I like it to be filled, seamless. There's no time that the guests are wondering what's happening, no. That's why it's also important to have a very good MC. So if you pick a friend to be your MC, that's fine, or a family member, make sure they're charismatic, they know how to command a room, they talk to the wedding coordinator or the wedding planner and the DJ to let them know what's going on, or just so everyone's on the same page, make sure you pick someone who knows what they're doing and can go with the flow. If not, you can ask your DJ if they do provide MC services. Myself as a DJ, I do provide MC services. Or you can also hire an MC. All right, so we just covered a lot of formalities and things during dinner. What music do you play when it's not the formalities, right? What kind of music do you play? So if you're part of any cultural background, this is a great time to play that music, especially slow music that your family members like from that particular culture. Dinner is a great time to play it. The vibe of dinner really depends on what kind of music you like. Also, leave it up to the DJ. If you don't have any specifications, you can tell the DJ, we don't have any specifications, we'll leave it up to you. The DJ should know what to do. I have so many playlists and lists of dinner music I can play, depending what I think is the most appropriate for the room. If there's slow music that you like, for example, 90s R&B, dinner is a great time to play that. Think about your favorite slow music and this is where you would request five to ten requests for dinner and I would let your DJ do the rest. If you do have any questions, please let me know. I would love to help. Thank you and congratulations. Have a beautiful wedding.